Here at Miller's Wildlife Headquarters LLC Incorporated, we celebrate the unique. And when you attempt to make a moderately successful YouTube series about every animal group alive on planet Earth, you're bound to run into some pretty unique stuff. We've seen soft animals produce shells using minerals extracted from seawater. Legless, tube-shaped animals with bizarre mouths. Tiny survivors that have adapted to nearly every environment. And transparent carnivores without brains that float through the ocean like living clouds. Are you noticing a pattern here? Every animal phylum has features which are at least familiar, if not identical, to those found in other phyla. That pattern is about to be broken. Meet the members of phylum Echinodermata, the echinoderms, the phylum that includes sea stars, brittle stars, feather stars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. They're entirely marine, covered in spines, and scoot their way through life on tiny hydraulic-powered tubes. But what is an echinoderm? What makes them so unique? And what strange powers do they possess? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. If you were to go back in time to meet the early ancestors of modern sea urchins and starfish, you would meet a bunch of weird little guys that look very different from anything alive today. The most glaring difference between modern echinoderms and those that existed 500 million years ago is their body symmetry. Most animals alive today, including all land animals, are bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that the left and right sides of their body are mirror images of each other. In contrast, members of phylum Cnidaria have radial symmetry around a central axis. Phylum Tenophora have something called rotational symmetry, which is like a mirror image flipped 180 degrees, and periphera lack body symmetry altogether. Body symmetry is one of the basic characteristics used to determine an animal's evolutionary origins. All bilaterally symmetrical animals belong to the clade Bilateria, including echinoderms. Which is confusing, because echinoderms are radially symmetrical, usually with five points of symmetry. But this is only the case for the adults of modern echinoderms. Echinoderm larvae come in such a bizarre variety of forms that we could spend the rest of this video talking about them and barely scratch the surface. But one thing that all echinoderm larvae share, at least during the early stages of their development, is a bilaterally symmetrical body plan, just like their Cambrian ancestors. The evolutionary and developmental changes in body form make echinoderms unique from all other animal phyla, and it's not the only thing. Echinoderm means hedgehog skin in ancient Greek, owing to the spiny plates called ossicles that cover their bodies. The ossicles are located beneath the skin, giving them an endoskeleton rather than an exoskeleton. They can be fused into one solid piece like sea urchins, or form many flexible joints like brittle stars. The ossicles can be smooth, bumpy, or spiny depending on the defensive needs of the species. A good defense mechanism is very important for echinoderms because running away isn't really an option. They scooch forward slowly through their environment on tiny tube-like feet that expand and contract to pull them forward. Echinoderms possess something called a water vascular system, which takes in seawater from their surroundings and pumps it through a series of canals to transport food, oxygen, and waste throughout the body. The water vascular system also powers the movement of their tube feet, filling and draining each foot with seawater like hundreds of tiny tentacle-shaped water balloons. For animals without brains, this level of coordination is no minor accomplishment. So next time you're at the beach, and you see a sand dollar slowly scooting over the shore, stop what you're doing and remind it what an incredibly impressive little weirdo it truly is. Next week, we finally grow a spine, or at least a dorsal nerve cord. We'll meet the animal group responsible for forging a path that would eventually lead to the evolution of fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, and of course, us. The Chordates, Phylum Chordata. Start the new year off the way nature intended by subscribing to Miller's Wildlife. Follow me on all the other computer stuff, 
and I'll see you next Friday. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.